So Rand's been very involved in things like that. He's truly, I think, kind of a citizen activist, which I think is why he's been embraced by the Tea Party movement, which is a grassroots effort where people want to get more involved in their government, want to have more of a voice in their government, and want to know more about how their legislators are voting and impact that more. Um, it's really about raising awareness of issues, and the Tea Party movement has really captivated the country, and I think it can be a real energizer for the Republican Party. Rand has been all over the state speaking at Tea Party events, and they've really embraced Rand. But Rand has really always been passionate about the ideas of liberty, the freedom of the individual versus the state. I think those ideas were really forged in him at a very, very young age. Rand was 12 years old when his father, Ron Paul, was first elected to national office. Um, he was very involved as a child in his dad's campaign. So involved that um, even though he's one of five children, the 1976 Republican convention between Gerald Ford and Ronald Reagan, um, Rand's father invited him to go with him. It was just the two of them. So 13-year-old Rand was there on the convention floor in 1976. And I don't, I, I know, I didn't remember all of this, so I don't know if any of you do, but it was very contentious. The delegates were evenly split that year between Gerald Ford and Ronald Reagan. And there were also a lot of delegates that were not committed. And Ron Paul had come out very early for Ronald Reagan and had been an early supporter of Ronald Reagan. But in 1976, the political powers of B were behind the incumbent, they were behind Gerald Ford. That convention went on into the night. As deals were made, arms were twisted, people started folding. And at the end of the night, only four U.S. congressmen stood for Ronald Reagan. And one of them was Ron Paul. And Rand Paul, 13-year-old Rand Paul, was by his dad's side of that. And he said he learned a lot of lessons. He said, I learned a lot of lessons about standing for what you believe in, having integrity, and also, he was really, the ideas of Reaganism were forged within him. And that's really where he stands in, in his conservative beliefs were really forged in that. The ideas of following the Constitution and having limited federal government are ideas that Rand Paul feels very, very passionately about. Um, he wants to go to Washington to fight for things like a balanced budget amendment which would force us to stop this out of control deficit spending that's driving us into mounting debt and debts to country like China which are really threatening our national security and our future economic security. He wants to fight for things like that. He wants to fight for term limits because he is a big believer that we need more citizen activists, we need more changing, we don't need people that are just there to protect their political turf, that are afraid to take tough stands, that want to make deals. That's not what he's about. Um, this is not the next rung in a political career for Rand Paul. It's actually taking him away from a career that he loves and is very gifted at. Um, so, but he believes in this enough that he wants to do it and he wants to, to make this kind of a, of a sacrifice because he believes that he can really make a difference. But he doesn't want to go there to stay. He, he wants to, to go there to really make a difference and to introduce ideas like this. So I believe as his wife and, and someone who knows him best, that if we in Kentucky send Rand Paul to the U.S. Senate, we'll be really sending a man that we can be very proud of and someone that will make a difference. Someone that is not only a, a man of great integrity and honesty, but also someone who has boundless energy and a fearless spirit to change things in Washington. Thank you all for having me today. So much. Would you entertain any questions from? Uh, us? Sure. I'd be happy to. Okay. Um, okay. Yes. Go ahead. I have heard that you all plan to still have your residence in Kentucky, although you'd be a senator. So how would that work out? How would that? Uh, I actually, it's a lot of virtual computer generated. You know, we've talked about a lot of things, and one of the ways that I sort of could embrace this race, because we do love our life in Bowling Green and we have three kids, is for me, I've just decided to take it one step at a time. There are two races that he would have to win for that to happen. We sat down with our two youngest sons and told them to be open to the idea of moving or not. We just, I don't, I can't really go there. One of the ways that I get excited about this 
is frankly just to see what God has in store for us. And that's my attitude. I'm not trying to predict six months down the road or a year down the road what we're going to do. I don't know what doors are going to be open. I don't know what will happen. So I, all I can say is what I tell our youngest two children. We're going to look at all these possibilities that happen and make those decisions when, they're, when they come to us. Seems technology is moving faster than the government. Because <laughs> <laughs> we can bring it up to speed. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else have any other questions? Oh, I thought Allison Truitt has come in. Would you like to share your connection to uh, Allison and your to Owensboro, of course? Yeah, um, yeah, Allison. And my hu Allison's husband, Trey, right? And my husband, Rand, went to medical school. Was it medical school? Mm -hmm. They were together. And I think the last time I saw you was at the garden show, and I was pregnant. Yeah. Which, we were both pregnant, and they've been very supportive of Rand, and I do appreciate you coming out here today. Yes, and I don't know if I mentioned this, but my mother wanted me to tell you all <laughs> that when she and my dad first got married, they lived on... It was East 22nd Street. She called me on the way here. She said, tell them that your dad and I lived in Owensboro in the 50s. East 22nd Street. My mother worked for Anderson's department. Oh, store. Right. <laughs> yeah, she said, tell them that. I'm like, okay, I'm trying to remember that. So that's my other Owensboro connection. You most of them there. I <laughs> Thank you, me too. I thought was. See, my mom waited on you. She said it was the nicest department store in town. It was. It was. We miss it. I know I do. I do too. On behalf of the women's club, I want to thank you for taking time out. I know it's a busy day and schedule with children and sharing with us. Thank you for having me. This is a beautiful venue and I'm just delighted to be here. So, you know, if anyone else has any other questions or you want to come. Ask me anything afterwards. And you can, okay. if you'd like to eat or if you need to go, whatever. I think it's going to be Okay. All right. Great. Okay, I'm weaning it today since this isn't my normal uh, position, and I think that Becky's going to.